Okay, in today's video, I'm going to go over how to calculate the specific heat of metal by calorimetry. Okay, here is the question we're going to try to answer. We have a 25 gram piece of metal it's sitting in a beaker of boiling water, and the metal is taken out of the beaker and quickly placed into a calorimeter that contains 85 milliliters of water at 25 degrees Celsius, and after the metal has released all of its heat, the temperature of the water is 27.5 degrees Celsius. And we want to know what is the specific heat of the metal. Okay, so we know we have this equation that we can use to calculate the change in heat, and it contains the specific heat. So I'm just going to write down delta Q is equal to M, which is the mass, times C times delta T. Now we can calculate the change in heat to any material using this formula, we want to know the specific heat of the metal, so we have delta Q equals mass times specific heat times change in temperature, so we can solve this equation for C, and this time we're going to talk about the metal, so I'm going to put C of the metal, and that is going to equal the change in heat of the metal over the mass of the metal times the change in temperature. Delta T is the change in temperature. Now we want to find this for the specific heat of the metal, so that means we have to use the change in heat of the metal, the mass of the metal, and the change in temperature of the metal, not of the water. Okay, but we have a problem here because we don't know the change in heat of the metal. Now we could use this equation to calculate the change in heat of the metal, but we don't know the specific heat. So we're kind of stuck here in this kind of catch-22. We don't know specific heat, so we can't calculate change in heat. We don't know change in heat, so we can't calculate specific heat. So we have to fall back to our one of our rules of laws of thermodynamics, and that tells us that the heat that the metal loses, so I'm going to put minus because the metal is going to be hotter than the water, and the energy is going to flow from the metal to the water, but the heat that the metal loses is going to be equal to the heat W for water that the water gains. So I'm going to put a plus sign in front here. All right, so we know that when something loses heat, something else must gain heat. In this situation, we have a calorimeter. It's a closed system. We have metal and water. The metal loses, the water gains. Now, we can calculate the change in heat of the water. That we can do because we actually have all the information. So I'm just going to write down this equation first once again. The change in heat of the water is equal to the mass of the water times the specific heat of the water times the change in temperature of the water. Okay, So we're going to use this equation to calculate the change in heat of the water. Once we know the change in heat of the water, we can equate that to the negative of the opposite of the change in heat of the metal, and then we can calculate the change in the specific heat of the metal using this equation. Now we have metal and we have water, and I like to make this little table. Now this is a little formal, you can just jot this down on your page if you want, but let's just write down all the information we have for the metal and the water so we don't get our masses, our temperatures, and our specific heats and all this stuff mixed up. So how much water do we have? Well we're told we have 85 milliliters, so 85 milliliters is of course 85 grams. Now what's the initial temperature of the water? It tells us the initial temperature of the water is 25 degrees C. The final temperature is 27.5 degrees C. And we have to remember when we calculate the change in temperature that this change in temperature is always going to be the final minus the initial temperature. So we have TF for final and T I for initial, and we're going to always subtract T final minus T initial, and that will ensure that we have the correct signs. So in this case, 27.5 minus 2 point, uh, tw uh, excuse me, 25 is just going to be 2.5, this is 0.5 degrees Celsius, and we know that's a constant that we've been given, you can look it up, the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Okay, now let's write down what we know about the metal, because we're going to need that information eventually, and we want to keep that straight. So we know how what's the mass of the metal, we're told, is 25 grams. Now, what's the initial temperature? Well, it's in boiling water. We'll assume we're at sea level, one atmosphere, so we're just going to put down 100 degrees Celsius, because that is obviously the boiling point of water. 
and the metal is in the water. We measured the thermometer with the thermometer, the temperature of the water. The metal's in the water, so we assume the metal is at the same temperature, okay? Now, what's the final temperature? Well, now, after we take the metal out of the water, the boiling water, we put it into the calorimeter, the final temperature of the water, which we measured with the thermometer, is 27.5 degrees Celsius. Well, now the metal is in this water, so now we know the final temperature of the water and the final temperature of the metal are the same. So this is going to be, oops, 27.5 degrees C. Now, what's the, what's the change in temperature? Now, we're going to use this, final minus initial. So final minus initial tells us that the change in temperature of the water is minus 72.5 degrees Celsius, okay? And this, of course, is what we're trying to find. All right, now let's go back and calculate the change in heat of the water. Well, we know the mass of the water, we're told. We have our table here now, 85 grams. We know that the specific heat of water is 4 0.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, and we know that the change in temperature of the water is 2.5. Okay, we want to make sure we use all of this for the water because we have to calculate the change or the change in heat of the water first. So we have C cancels with Celsius, gram cancels with gram, and you can see we're going to be left with joules. We're calculating change in heat, and that is going to be in joules, so that's good. And we know that this is going to be plus, I'm going to put a plus sign here, 889 joules. The water gained 889 joules. Well, where did that heat come from? Well, we know the water gained, the metal lost, so we know the metal lost that much heat. Okay, so the delta Q for the metal is going to be negative 889 joules. And we know we now we can calculate the specific heat using this equation, which we got from this equation, we rearranged C, and now we're going to write down that the specific heat of the metal is equal to delta Q of the metal divided by the mass of the metal times the change in temperature of the metal. That means that minus 889 joules the mass of the metal is 25 grams, and the change in temperature of the metal, right up here, minus, okay? Now, it's good to keep your minus, get used to this in science, keeping your minus signs all straight, and you'll get this as a positive number. Now, if you left a minus sign off, you get the same number, just be negative, and specifically, you can't be negative. You can just make it a positive number, but it's nice to have all our signs work out, and if we do this right, then they should work out. So we know now, if we calculate this, and we have to remember, you got to do the bottom first, divide that into the top, and you get 0 0.49 joules per gram degree Celsius. Okay? Here I have grams. Oops, I should have put down here. This is obviously degree Celsius and joules, and therefore you can see that this is the specific heat of the metal based on our calorimetry experiment, okay? So we have our we have our change in heat equation, mc delta t. We solve that for c. We know that the change in heat of the water, the water gains, the metal loses. Those numbers are going to be the same, opposite sign. Calculate the change in heat of the water. We assume if the water gained that much heat, the metal lost that much heat, then we have our mass, our change in temperature, and we have our specific heat for the metal, okay? So it's kind of a lot to kind of keep track of. I gave you the idea of using this table. I think it's a good idea. Just jot all that stuff down. You don't have to make such a formal table, but just kind of make a little note on your paper there. And I think if you follow those steps, you will be successful. Okay? Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. And we will see you next time.